So this question says, for an RLC series of circuit, it's giving me the voltage amplitude and frequency. Uh, this, let me just give, start by giving it some label, voltage amplitude and frequency. The resistance and inductance are fixed at, um, okay. Find the average power dissipated in the resistor for following values of, um, oh, okay. So let me uh, start by drawing the circuit. And um, we did this uh, series, uh, we did this AC circuit. I have the same disclaimer as before, uh, which is that there is an easier way or seemingly easier way to do this question, which is to look up the formulas from the textbook. Um, that'll give you the same answer as what I'm going to drive. But uh, um, so, so, you know, if you just uh, want a quick way to find the answer, that still works. Um, it, you know, there's no knocking it. it uh, the amount of time we have for AC circuit, we are not really uh, aiming for deep understanding of how AC circuit works because, you know, we are covering in the last week of a 16 week semester. Uh, this is not our main focus. Um, having said all that, uh, I, I still think uh, if you learn to use complex impedance, that you can do this analysis from scratch. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually easy enough once you understand how complex impedance is used. So, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to use complex impedance to um, get the answer here just from scratch. The only formula I have to memorize is the impedance of an inductor, which is I omega L, and impedance of capacitor, which is one over I omega C. So I need to know that. And I need to know that, the, that my power source uh, as a complex function is described as my amplitude times E to the I omega T. And there could be a phase factor, but let me just leave it here for simplicity's sake. And when I describe current flowing through this circuit, uh, which is also a complex function described by I naught e to the I uh, omega t, and this time possibly a phase factor. And uh, this uh, um, complex function of current is given by Ohm's law meaning it's uh, given by my voltage divided by the equivalent impedance. So my first job here is to calculate the equivalent impedance. I need that to, um, I need that to calculate the current and let me uh, always in this particular question, because I want to make sure that I don't wanna make any mistakes. Uh, let me be sure to express the power dissipated in the register always as uh, something that comes from I squared R. As in, I'm going to be careful not to use any other versions like V squared over R or IV because with these versions, there's a possibility of mistake. I might use the voltage for the entire circuit instead of just across the register by mistake. So, so I, I'm just gonna stick to this expression and I'll be careful about taking the average and going through the proper procedure for calculating the average power. So it's so okay, I need to calculate the equivalent impedance. So my equivalent impedance is um, impedance of the register, that's just the R. Uh, so, you know, these are elements in series, so I'm just gonna, add them like registers in series. Series and circuits are super simple. I think that's why your textbook, which doesn't use complex impedance, is limited to only talking about series and circuit, which you know is fine by me. So impedance of register plus the impedance of inductor plus the impedance oh, of um, uh, plus the impedance of uh, capacitor. And um, I guess at the very end, I'm going to do a substitution for omega 
using the expression that angular frequency is equal to two pi times frequency. Uh, I'll do that at the very end uh, when I'm plugging in or when I'm ready to plug in numbers. Um, this can be simplified a little bit. So let me simplify it. This one over I can be written as minus I. So using that to simplify, this will be R plus I times combination of these two terms, omega L minus one over omega C. And I think I'm gonna leave it there. I don't really need to do any more work there. So, so with that complex impedance, um, my current is gonna be my voltage. V naught e to the i omega t divided by um, yeah, r plus i omega l minus one over omega c. And um, I'm not going to do any work of simplifying this or anything like that because the next uh, procedure I'm gonna go through will do some of those simplifications for me. So um, with the uh, other questions where the question was asking about uh, either power factor or some phase factor, I you know, went through the trouble of rewriting this complex number so that I have magnitude times e to the i v. Um, here, I'm not being asked for any of those factor stuff, so I'm not gonna bother doing it because I don't need it. Um, because for me to calculate the average power really, all I need to do, so, you know, if I'm doing the average power and if this I were, you know, a uh, function of time, and if I have the complex expression, this uh, really just becomes the complex I, complex conjugate times I to itself. Um, so that's I squared. And then the whole time average and all this stuff that's taken care of, that's uh, taken care of uh, by this uh, division by two. Uh, times up. So um, the only hard work here is, cal well, harder of the, um, the whole thing is calculating this uh, complex conjugate times the complex function. And uh, you will see that uh, when I actually do it here, it's actually not that hard. So let me do that. So I'm going to compute the complex conjugate of I times I itself. When I do that, let me write out the complex conjugate. V naught times e to the minus i omega t divided by r minus i omega l minus one over omega c. That's the complex conjugate. Multiply that to the i itself. V naught e to the i omega t. Oh, yeah. Sometimes my spoken i is imaginary i. Sometimes it's current i. You'll just have to watch what I'm writing. <laughs> r plus i omega L minus one over omega C. Um, I, I'm sure this is why electrical engineers use J for imaginary number. And um, before we write anything down for saying what this is equal to, we should look at some things that just uh, are going to simplify. Doing the exponential algebra on these two, they're gonna cancel each other out. we are going to get one out of both of these. And on the denominator, um, I think we've done this expansion quite a few times before. We do this uh, alternating sign of minus and plus. What's going to happen is the cross terms are going to cancel out, as in the real times the imaginary, imaginary times real, they're going to cancel out. So all you're going to be left is the real part the squared plus, because minus i times i gives you plus plus the imaginary part of the script. And um, the, I hope you see why we use this operation to get something that looks like an absolute value. So, so writing this out clearly, you get a V naught squared, that's the numerator, and the denominator is simply R squared plus this combination squared, um, omega L minus one over omega C squared. So, um, so that's it. Um, I, I guess that's uh, the I squared. So, um, so for the 
power dissipated. Um, so it, I need to multiply by R divided by two. So I need to multiply this by R and divide it by two. And that should get you the correct answer. Um, I guess maybe it's worth the plugging in number for this um, just the ones to um, make sure that uh, it, you can see that it um, it does give you what what you want. So, okay. so let me just plug in number for that. I am just gonna do that on Wolfram Alpha because um, some of these can get a little bit gnarly. Um, so let me <laughs> bring in uh, Wolfram Alpha screen and do it there uh, because you know it's. Um, it, it's the converting uh, um, frequency to omega and all that. Um, oh, I wonder if all from alpha takes uh, mathematical substitution notation. Let me give it a try. So in a squared, um, if it does, I think I'm gonna, no, it doesn't, Never mind. Wait, does it? Uh, it's complicated enough that I'm not going to do it. Okay, so VLAN squared, 120 volts uh, squared divided by the resistance 250, 250 ohm squared plus, and this is where 2 pi times uh, frequency, 450 hertz um, times the inductance of 0 0.1 Henry minus one over two pi times the 450 hertz times um, C, um, AD microfarad, um, AD um, E minus six farad, okay, squared. <laughs> this is why I'm using Wolfram Alpha because it, it shows me how parentheses complete. It's easier to not make a mistake here. Uh, Yeah, squared, and then, okay, complete that parenthesis. So I have my whole fraction times the resistance, the 250 ohm divided by two. So that should give me something in the unit of power. Um, yeah, <laughs> 12.9 watt, let me plug that in. Can I do nine? Yeah, 12.9 should be within tolerance, 12.9. Um, and that should say it's the correct answer. Yeah, so um, I think I picked these numbers so that um, so that both of these numbers are in the on the same side of the resonance. So I think that should mean for part B, where you know everything is the same. The only thing that changes is the capacitance. And so I think I tried to pick the numbers so that um, this combination is always uh, always positive. So wait, always positive? Yeah, always positive. So the smaller the C is, I think the closer to resonance you will be and the higher the power dissipated here should be. My watt vector, it differs depending on uh, exact random number that's generated for you. But, um, but uh, that's what you should see that, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, let me know of any questions on this question. Part to be, I'm not plugging in numbers because it's identical. You just swap out what C is and um, you get a new number. <laughs>